Good morning, it's day six. It is a pretty mild 20 degrees out there. It's a little bit before five o'clock. It's snowing or raining, I can't tell. It's like either a really frozen rain or it's a really wet snow, it's in between. And it's kind of making a pretty cool sound on the roof. It's like a pitter patter, pitter patter. Been doing that for about an hour now. It's not really accumulated to much. We're looking at like an inch more than we started with last night. Today might be the last real fishing day on this trip. It might be the last fishing day on this trip. We got some negative 45 real feel coming. It'll be pretty rough. And then the next day I think is gonna be somewhere in the same ballpark. So kind of looking like today might be the last day. That'll give me some time to get home, edit, get these videos uploaded and start on the next trip. This morning, I got like a pan of green peppers, onions, and potato shavings going. And I also got the coffee going in the other one. Today we're gonna go after some brook trout pretty hard. The boys still wanna do some jigging for, for Lakers. They got that lake trout bug. I think it's where they come from on West Grand, even though they got like a phenomenal salmon fishery. These guys really love catching lake trout, jigging for lake trout. They love going for the big fish. You know, everybody likes to catch a big fish, myself included. That's why I like pike fishing so much. Today we are going to set primarily brookies. We're gonna head up towards like Lock Dam area on the uh, north end of Chamberlain Lake up past the arm. All right, it's 5.30. We're gonna get a little jump on it today, get a little early start. There's a little bit of accumulation out here. Let's take a look. You can see it's starting to build up a little bit on the sled. We got about an inch. Yeah, the rest of that will come off as I go. Love it. We got some pretty good snow right now. It's coming down good. It's big, big flakes. It's starting to build up a little bit. Should make for a pretty fun day. I've always caught fish when it's snowing and when it's not crazy cold. Where are you headed? Dakwam. Yep. Yeah, how long does that take you? How long does that take you to get to Dakwam? Uh, my truck, two hours. Got it. Yep. Got to get that wood to the mill. Yeah. <laughs> hey, okay, have a good day. Good luck to you. Good weekend. Yes, you too. Thank you, bye. About seven foot right there. That's a little surprising because I fished right by that bow the other day. It was about two foot, so got a little drop off here. We're fishing rainbow smelts today. Rookies love these things, like candy to them. Just don't want to hit bottom, that's all. She's warmed up pretty good. I bet you she's close to 
20 degrees right now. We got no wind blowing yet. It's hard to believe tomorrow's gonna be negative 40. So we got about three foot here. That's about perfect. I got a nice short leader on this one. Another tip for brookies is use the shortest leader you can get away with. You know, that's the stuff that's gonna break the quickest on you or get frayed up or, or uh, get into a snarl. So this one, I got about a 14, 15 inch leader. If that, going right to a swivel, right to the nylon. It's a really good depth for brookies right here. Anything under four foot, pretty well golden. In the winter, brookies really drive that bait shallow, right up under the ice. As shallow as they can, they feel pretty comfortable there. We're going to set it about halfway down. We got a good 12 inches of ice here to contend with too. Maybe 14 inches here near the bank. All right, no flags up, let's keep going. I love that auger. That auger is pretty well awesome. That one's drilled probably close to 3,000 holes now. Maybe more. Not the first set of blades either. Wow, some water right there too. So these are good sets to start with. That's a uh, that's seven seven and a half foot and then I could work my way in from these and make an easy shift in I just don't want to hit those rocks that's bad I always straighten out my fluorocarbon just by pulling it that tests the knot run my hand down the line to clean it off in case there's any real grease on there and also feel for any abrasions so we'll set this one a little lower than half in seven foot we'll go down about four Make it nice and visible. I think they travel the, the bottom or within a foot of the bottom for the most part. All right, we are set. Great day already. Got him, too small. Oh, just ripped out, dang it. Shoot. Ripped it right out of his mouth. It looks promising. Ah, uh, nothing. Dang it. Oh, yep, it came around. Oh, man, that was a nice trout. Why are they not eating today? Dang it. That was a nice one. Yeah, I got to look at that one. He was in the 18 range. Real pretty fish. I don't think I spiked him. When I got here, the line was slack, it's like he dropped it, but he was just coming around. Oh, maybe. Oh, I think there's something on there. Oh, he dropped it for return. He dropped it. Bait's still alive. That's weird. Maybe that, better. That flag right there just went up. Did it? I was walking down the line, and then this was the only one up. We got a chance? It hasn't stopped. Still, still rolling. It's good to have one of these guys. Oh, geez. It hasn't stopped. Wow. We got fall that's, fish? That's not a mountain, bro. No? No, no way. Is it? Oh, stay there. Come on. No, no, no. Dude, I burned that fish right sideways. Oh, for four. Felt nice. He'll come back at least, because he didn't get a hook. That's crazy. How are these guys not eating? Right. I hate to let them eat any more because, thanks buddy, because uh, the rocks. I know, you can't let them go too far. I don't want to let them stop, and I figured I'd hit him because he's running. 
That's unbelievable. There she goes. Come on, baby, be on there. That feels nice. Be a brookie, baby, be a brookie. Be a brookie. Come on, baby, be a brookie. That's a big one. Beautiful brook trout. Beauty. All right. Nice big fat brookie. You guys got a flag. Nice brookie right there, guys. Big fat one. Beautiful colors. Nice fish. They're uh, get gorgeous. Look at that belly. Holy cow. All right, I'll pop the hook out and get that one right back. Woo! 17 and a half. And I got another flag. Cool, got it. All right, let's go catch this other fish. We got a little hit and run here. I don't like how that line's on there, so I'm gonna refeed it. Not big, not big at all, but we do have them. Nice little trout. Right. Nice little trout right there. We're gonna get him back. Beauty. Take it, take it. Oh, it's hard to get him to go down. Oh, you always taking that. Oh, I can't go. We got burbot? No, that fish come out. That's that's a white fish. Lake or anything? Oh, he come back. He came in like I thought he was gonna take it. He's way high to the left. Way, I just way see left. Him. Huh. Maybe next time. All right, let's see what we got here, folks. I don't think I'm that one either. 
there. A little bit of weight. No! What the heck? What the heck? It's like no barb on that hook. Dang it. Baba, I almost don't even want to watch that on camera, but we'll see. I hate losing them. Way out, way to the side. I don't know if I even made contact. Hitting it. There we go. There we go. There we go. There's a the fish. Nice bro. Nice one. Another one of those nice 17 range. 17 range brookie right there. Real pretty green back. Nice. That's like four ice today. <laughs> Tough day. I just talked to the group north of us and they don't, they haven't even caught a fish yet today. So it's tough day. I got, I think four on the ice. I've missed like close to four probably and had maybe three or four other flags like hit and run. So it's been, it's been definitely a tougher day fishing than we expected. You know, the fronts, I guess, here on us, I thought we were pre-front because tomorrow is going to be about negative 40 to negative 45 real feel. So I thought we'd have a good bite today, but I guess it was yesterday. Yesterday we had a spectacular bite. Fish just took it right out of my hand. Oh, no, I got him. I got him. I got him. Oh, it's a nice one. <laughs> Pretty awesome. Got him. Number five for the day. Pop that hook right out. Got him. He's pretty lively because I just caught him right there. But look at the colors on that one. That's a beauty. Wow. fish but I don't got some weight to it. Nice. Right. Oh he's already got a line coming out of his face from somebody else. Pretty one. That shows you guys about cutting the hooks. 
he's got a line coming out from somebody else right there and he's still eating. I'm gonna cut that a little shorter for him. And he's still eating, so that shows that that is a good way to do it. There's a nice pretty 17 and a half, 18 inch brookie going back. Over, huh, Joe? Yeah, a little bit. Gosh. Just snow. Snow's Gosh, good. Snow. Snow's good means it won't be ice. That's right. Got some weight there, huh? Yep. Didn't run. It's probably a burb. Any weight? No, not really. Oh. I'd say it might be a white fish, maybe. Burb. Burb. Another burb. <laughs> nice. Nice Chamberlain one. Lake Whitey. Get him, Slim. Play him out, play him out. Oh, oh nice yes! Yeah. All, All right. right, Slim. How'd that feel, That's buddy? Nice. Looks like, oh, jeez. What you got there, Bob? Brookie. Oh, there's a brookie in it, yeah. Brookie, way out nice, of here. Nice brookie. That's keeper if you want it. That's a yep, I'll take it. Really took it down, no. Yeah, he won't bite you. <laughs> <laughs> nice Thanks. job, buddy. Thanks, Joe. All right. Okay, beautiful. Oh, yeah. Nice, one more. Got it. Forty feet. That's no mountain trout we're on. Well, I don't know. I don't feel good. Really? I'm not gonna lie, I just don't feel that great at all. A little bit of weight, but not a little tight. Permafrost, my fingers by the time we get this. Yeah. Get a bottom yeah. marker on it, bud? Right here. Swivel. Oh, yeah. Nice right there. All right, it's pretty late in the day. We're looking at like 3, 3.30. I just shifted some traps. I think I switched four spots and I left one, just kind of shift the depth on it. When you guys are fishing brookies, here's a couple tips for you. If you're not getting action on a decent brookie body of water, move. Keep shifting them, whether it be 50 feet in, 50 feet out. Uh, find some shallower water, find a little bit deeper water, find an edge, just move them. Cause brookies are pretty pretty attracted to action, like, like the drill, believe it or not. If you're not on a super high pressure lake, you can move and every time you move, you should find some more fish and some new fish. That's, you know, that's how I've been catching a lot more fish is by moving and being active with my bait. Smelt are notorious for spinning up lines and spinning up above your reel and spinning up around swivels and weights and stuff. So that's why I'm always checking my bait. And when you do that, you lift it, you lower it, you know, it, it shows a fish in that water column. It also gets the bait really active and moving again, you know, and maybe try a different depth. So those are a couple tips for brookies. And I'll tell you a weird one, you'll laugh at this, but if you're on a lake like this that doesn't get a ton of pressure, 
I've found that, you know, those two things first, that's fishing, moving your traps around and you're finding new holes and different depths. And when you're moving the bait, checking your bait, that's just flat out fishing. That's what I call fishing rather than just setting your traps and leaving them until the flag goes up. But the other thing, and this, this works, is drive your sled right next to the traps one time and just turn around and see what happens. Yesterday, I did that about three times and it gave me about six extra flags. And you hear guys say, you know, oh, I just drove by that and it wasn't up, you know, when they get back to the shack or when they get to where they're going and look behind them and it's up. And that does a couple things. You know, if there's a brookie just hanging out, watching your bait and eyeing it, and you go by and it stirs up your bait, a lot of times that'll trigger that brookie to bite. Or if the, it might be the brookie's just to the side and it hears the sled and it comes out of wherever it was and it looks to see what's going on in that area that just made some noise and there's your bait sitting there. But it does work. I know it sounds foolish driving a sled next to a trap, but don't be afraid to drive right by your trap line. As you can see, right through here, there's several tracks. So when I come out and check, I drive right next to it. Now on high pressure lake, do the opposite. Stay away from your traps. Uh, walk to them, you know, park your sled really far away, walk to them on the high pressure where the fish are a lot smarter and have been smartened up by anglers over the years. But on the very low pressure ones like this, don't be afraid to make some noise. Don't be afraid to stir up, you know, drill some extra holes. It, it usually happens with brookie fishing quickly after you drill a hole and set a trap because they're coming over to investigate because they are predators. So those are a couple tips for you. Smelt have been working way better than everything else. It's a really soft, Little hooks and pretty light fluorocarbon works well too. I don't run weights when I'm brookie fishing. I'm not that deep. So it's just a matter of getting that, that smelt or whatever your bait is below the bottom layer of the ice so he can swim around. You know, if you can get him to go down without a weight, you're golden. That way the brookie won't feel the weight or get it hung up in the rocks or the dry kai or logs underneath the surface. And then I use fluorocarbon. Fluorocarbon sinks as opposed to mono, which floats. So that's another good option to use. It's, it's a lot clearer and you could straighten it and take, take the memory out of it. So I use like, I'll use as heavy as 10 if I'm around a bunch of junk on the bottom. If I'm not, I'll use eight pound test, maybe even go down to six, so it's less visible. I use light wire gamakatsu hooks. I think they're uh, number two drop shot hooks actually, and they work really well for brookies and you can snip them if they get them too deep and they're light enough, they should be able to rust them out. But that's about it for brook trout fishing. It's pretty easy, they're pretty aggressive. Got quite a few on a really tough day on the ice. I talked to the group up there and I don't think they had one fish yet. They've been struggling today. And our, our group hasn't been stacking like we we have been the last couple days because I, I think these fronts are really brutal right now. And that The last of that front right there, you can kind of see it. Now we're starting to get some bluebird sky and got some clouds and then it looks like another front coming in with some more weather some more snow and then after that it's probably going to turn real clear because we're supposed to get way into the negatives today and go from whatever we had for a high like 18 this morning it's been getting colder all day and windier so it's going to go probably to 18 below so that's quite a change in in a few hours yeah usually i just pull the roof down first no, you're all right. Yep. How much stuff does it clean in the OB Joe? Not much. I replaced most of it. What do you think, old boy? Oh, we're gaining on him. Get that out. Uh... Yeah, I'll grab it. I'm getting serious out here.
Okay, made it off the lake. That was a pretty rough ride. It's uh, it's bad right now. We're looking at negative five degrees mercury, and it's blowing easily 30 out of the northeast. Maybe, maybe sustained 25. Probably getting gusts to 35. So, real feel is cold. I'll put the math right over here for what that really is with negative five mercury and 25 mile an hour winds. So it's getting cold. Tomorrow is going to be absolutely brutal. We're looking at real feel wind chill of negative 45 degrees. So not a fishing day tomorrow. It's going to be a try to get out of here day tomorrow, which isn't ideal, but that's just the way it's working out. I came back to the shack, made sure my heater's going. I'm going to start to dry out my boots and the clothes I wore today. I'm going to go eat some dinner with the boys and take a load out tonight, get it stowed away, packed away, make sure my truck's stowed away, ready to load up all the rest of the stuff tomorrow when it's brutally cold and get out of here tomorrow. <laughs> well, we're coming to an end of the trip, Joe. Seems like it flew by, but we spent seven days in the Allagash. We tried hard. I would say about four out of the seven days we landed on fish and done well. We struggled for two or three days, but we fought the cold. I can't even remember struggling. I remember struggling down T loss. Yeah. That was about it. Today was today was a slow day, but we still probably scratched up 15 fish that. or so. You know what I mean? Yeah. Better, better than nothing. Yeah. But yeah. Got some nice brookies on the ice. I seen a lot of brookies this week. Yeah. A lot. We caught a lot of brookies from 16 to 19 inch. I would say we, we caught a lot of trout. I agree. Pretty fish. Can't ask for no better, really. I, I wish we would have hit the jig in a little bit better, but we never landed on a good jig hole. We no. just never found them, you know. No, it was too miserable to move around too. Yeah, you know, we 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 fished through two absolute ignorant cold snaps, you know. Yeah. I, I had a hell of a week. Yeah. Good me time. Too. Glad you glad you could join us. Yeah, me too. Thanks for having me, guys. A lot of fun. Enjoyed it. Good time. Lots of good grub. Lots of good fishing. Yeah. I'd say excellent native brook trout fishery. Oh yeah, I don't absolutely. believe they stock it, right? You no, know, no, this is all a native. I fishery. never saw a clip fan or anything. So and you know, we I caught that one decent lake, but we didn't catch a lot of dinka lakes. You know no. what I mean? They were they were quality fish. They were oh, nice yeah. fish. A lot of the lake trout we caught. Small white fish. That was small good. white fish. We didn't. Yeah. We yeah. usually see bigger white fish up here. That was our legal white fish. No, no, I don't think not we one did. legal white fish. Fifteen so and a half was the closest. Two or three, fifteen and a half. Yeah. And a couple real nice cask. Yeah. yeah. Bunch of burbot. Probably the most burbot I've ever seen. Kind of a slack trip for mountain trout. We only probably had right never ten that, mountain never trout. That. Week, maybe you know. Yeah. Usually you get nailed fishing for brookies, yeah. but if that right. Yeah. Everybody caught nice trout that come up and fish. You know what Everybody I mean? Everybody did. Mark caught nice trout. You caught nice trout. Yeah. I caught nice trout. Colin landed on one the first when he first got here. Slim yeah. had nice trout. Was that your best brookie? Aaron caught nice brookie. Best brookie ever, yeah. Yeah, Cameron Mine got his best Aaron brookie. Aaron got one for you. Left. Yeah. I haven't weighed it. Mine's right up there. I don't know what it weighs. I'm guessing close big. to three pounds. Yeah, right oh, that I, range. I bet you it was three. That fish of Cameron's was one of the fattest trout I've ever seen. I mean, that, that thing was, awesome. was an absolute 18 inch football, you know. We, we see a lot of silver trout, but we see a lot of dark trout with yeah. some nice collars, you know what I mean? If you had it all over to again, would you have done this trip? Oh. Knowing geez. what you know uh, now? I'd go next week with the wipe <laughs> the button, <man. laughs> Yeah, I'd go next week. How about you fellas? Would oh, you do yeah. it again? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah no me question. too. That's I mean, honestly, we fished probably four or five of those days without seeing another human outside of our Never group. Never seen nobody. Yeah, nobody. today we it saw was... some life. Yeah. Some snowmobilers and... But for the most part, no one else crazy enough to do it. That's pretty much what it was when, <laughs> yeah. when the warden checked us. I guess when the ranger checked us first, first time he I've was been he was worried yeah. about our safety with a cold. Yeah. Then the game warden came out a little while later and said we were the only idiots around. <laughs> yeah. When I'm looking up the temperature that propane freezes, it's cold out. Yeah. <laughs> and what, what was the verdict? For negative 44 propane freezes. Then we're gonna hit that tomorrow real feel, right? And the wind chill that you guys had was negative 35. Yeah. So that's, that's that's flirting with disaster. It was real. I've I've fished some brutal weather, and we fished a day that was in the 20s, negative 20s. One trip we come up here, Slim and I and, and Cameron, his sled wouldn't even turn over that morning. It was in the negative 20s, but we yeah. it didn't seem as though we had wind that trip. We, we, went, we, <laughs> caught fish. we caught fish. We caught fish. We come here. We tried hard. Yeah, I'd say to anyone who's planning a trip 
up here, make sure you got good gear. I could not. My trip would have went about 20 minutes oh, after man. I hit that first slush, yeah. slush patch. Gears but you got to have good gear. You got to have good clothing. Got to have good friends. If you're crazy enough to do it alone, make sure you got everything good and you got several exit strategies because th this whole week could have been a disaster any oh, day yeah. of the week. That, you got to be responsible. This, yeah. You don't want to put someone else in a pinch coming to save you. Yeah, that's just it. You know, it's not that, just you. Yeah. That shack we had of Slim's though, that, that Eskimo shack oh, was man. just, I mean, that made the week, it made it made a miserable week comfortable. Yeah. You know, it really did. I mean, yeah. do we see the five pounder? Absolutely not. You know what I mean? No. We looked for one, we didn't find it, but we see a, the, a, a 16 to 19 inch football trout was nothing to sneeze at. Yeah. We, see, we had fish every day. You know yeah. what I mean? We, some days were better than others, but. I'm still not surprised, but I'm still impressed that you guys hammer the lakers even being on a lake where you can catch a five six pound rookie oh yeah. you guys got it in your blood oh you yeah you guys will always have it in your blood we go to west grand's best salmon lake in the state you guys are whaling on the lakers we come to the best brookie lake you guys are still whaling lakers now you fish brookies too but that's what, like what i've always said about the pike down my way i was just gonna say if there's pike in here would you be would you have a trap now for him? no I wouldn't. No. <laughs> oh, for pike? Here, I'd have five for pike. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah I yeah. mean, it's all about the big fish. Right. And I know that's what you guys are. Toke fish which, is an addiction. When you see, like, you ain't got to catch one. When you see one of them 15-pound yeah. fish come through the ice, you... And the same thing one. goes for pike. Yeah. When you guys catch something over 20, the game changes. Yeah. 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 You don't even want to chase a flag for a three-pounder. Right. You know, so... That's why I, I totally understand why yeah. you guys do it. We troll and I actually like it. Yeah. You just don't oh, see know, trout man. like that down home, you know what yeah. I mean? And every one was different, which was cool. Yeah, a lot some of darks and perfect stuff. tails up here that we have a I know it, they all got their fins. <laughs> for 10 years. They, <laughs> they <laughs> scrubbers. Yeah. <laughs> They're not easy to catch. So pretty awesome trip. Thanks for viewing it, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed it as much as we like doing it. Over and out. Catch yep. out in the grand. Yeah. West Grand. Oh, if you guys want to see a West Grand trip, leave a comment in the bottom saying what you want to see on West Grand and if you even want to see it this year. All right, that's going to do it for tonight. Had an awesome dinner with the boys. Had some potatoes with pork loin and some leftover baked beans that were just tremendous. Ride home was pretty rugged right now. It's blowing in the 30s. Uh, air, air temp, real feel is cold. It's negative eight on the mercury and it's blowing between 25 and 35 right now so she's ripping uh, as long as this doesn't turn too hard east i'm i'm pretty safe here where i set up i set up for north northwest which is the primary this time of year so hopefully it stays right there all in all great day fishing bite was off pretty hard today really had to work for him had a lot of drops had a lot of hit and runs but still managed to catch quite a few you know, anytime you can catch, oh, would I get six or seven brookies? All solid, good keepers. That's a heck of a day. Got them pretty good, and the boys caught some fish too, which was good. And all in all, excellent trip. Tomorrow morning, I'm going to go ahead and try to bust out of here. It's going to be pretty, pretty ridiculous. I guess the lowest of the low is going to be at 6 a.m. It'll be 45, 48 um, below zero real feel. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Hopefully, I'll have some footage for you tomorrow morning. Really hard to get footage this week with the GoPros and, and the camera stuff. Just batteries freezing up, cameras freezing up, and it's been, it's been a challenge. So hopefully, I'll get a little bit more footage for you for the end of this video. She is frosty out here. I got the first load ready to go. I think we made a good decision yeah, yeah. today. Yeah, well, this is worse than Tuesday right now. Yeah.
Yeah. <laughs>